Babani. Right. So this is our, so this is to get you to review the uh, dual form. And then if I want to say his door, I want to say Babuhu. Okay. So um, for the first one, how called one door? So how do you say single indefinite house in Arabic? Oh, yeah, start on the left. Okay. Uh, right? One house is Baytun. All right, and then how do you say plural? Al. What's the plural of Baytun? Buyutun, right? The pattern is for Uyun. So it's going to be Al Buyutu. Yeah, right? Because on the when definite, you don't put Tanween at the end. Never put Tanween. Okay. How do you say two houses? Baytani. Baytani. So you follow the same, the dual follows the same pattern. Okay, how do you say his house? Baytuhu. Uh, Raf you want to do the next one? What's the word in English? <laughs> the, the, the clue that they give for the plural is al hafilati. So what's al hafilati? Someone remember? Can I help him? Transportation. Oh, wow. Bus. Bus. Okay. So, what's the singular for Hafiladu? So, how do, how did we make um, plural for something that's feminine? Like if I said Da'atun, right? Da'atun is what? Watch, right? If I want to make a plural, what do I do? I, I put I take out the tam or buta and I put an alif ta at the end. Ta'atun. So if it's hafilatun, hafilatun. Hafilatun. So hafilatun is one bus. Okay. This is why we're doing this just so that we review all of these words. How do you say two buses? Hafilatan. So all you do is you take the uh, Ta marbuta, make it into a regular ta, and put an alif noon plus noon. Ha filatani. Ha filatun. Ha filatun. That's why when you make it plural, you have ha filatun. Okay. Uh, how do you say his bus? So use it. Use a singular form. Hafilatuhu. So the way that this looks is Hafilatuhu. So this is not a ta marbuta. This is a ta. This is your ta. It's changed back into a regular ta. Hafilatuhu. Okay. So this is some words will not look feminine, but they might have a attached pronoun. Happy that you Okay, uh, what are you going to do the next one? Uh, What's Ummun the mother? Mother. Okay, yes. so Ummun is mother. mother. Yep, and how do you say the mothers? Uh, what's the plural of Ummun? Ummahatun. You have um, it's, a, it's a different, uh, it's not the same pattern. So you have um one, plural is um, 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 um,
and that's why we're doing it so that you can stick to them. Okay, so when I give these the next time for homework, um, work on them at home and look up all the, the words. Okay, so Ummahatun is mother. So how do you say the mother? Al um Mahatu. So you always do is just put an al and take out the tanween and just put a tamma. Okay, al um mahatu. How do you say two mothers? So you take the singular form and you add an alif noon, right? Two mothers. Okay, how do you say his mother? Okay. Uh, Sarah, the next one. Car. Car. Okay, what's the plural? Sayarat Asayaratu Asayaratu. Okay, the cars and then two cars is Sayaratani, right? Okay, okay, how do you say his car? Sayaratuhu Sayaratuhu. So you have Asayarat. Uh, Oh, the yeah. Yeah. So you have. Yeah. 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 Follow the next one, keys. Miftahun uh, is keys. Okay, one key. How do you say the keys, plural? Uh, Almost. What's the plural of miftah? It's the pattern of mafa'ilun. Mafa'ilun. Mafatihu. Mafatihu. Okay, so key. Al Mafatihu. Yep. Al Mafatihu, the keys. Okay, how do you say two keys? Mafatihu. Oh, use a singular, make it dual. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Niftahani, right? Niftahani. So you just take the ta, I mean, just take the ha, and you just put a alif noon at the end. Okay, how do you say his key? No, it's not. Yeah, you just oh, so, yeah, I think it's a mistake. I thought, yeah, that was, <coughs> it should be, yeah, uh, they're, they're the same form. Okay, so that's one. Miftahufu. So do the one under the English word for key by that time. Ismun. What does it mean? Name. Okay, or noun. Uh, what's the names? What's the plural of Ismun? Pattern is Afa'ad. So you have ismun. All right. So this is how patterns work. You have afalun. Okay. So you have. So usually, um, not always, but some of. So you can usually um, correspond the fa, ayn, and lam to the first, second, and third letters. Okay. So the alif 
and here and the Hamza here and the Alif here. You can just add them in. So if I take the this Fa and treat it as this uh, Hamza al Wasl, take this Ain, treat it as this Teen, take this Lam, treat it as this Mim. So I can form the pattern based on that, uh, based on this template. So I'm going to start with the Hamza, right? Hamza. Okay, what am I going to put on the Mim? No, what is it a Fatha Dhamma Sukun? Sukun, right? So you have, uh, uh, yeah, hold on. Al. So I'm going to make it Al. Make it plural. Al. Actually, hold on. This one is not going to, uh, this is a Hamza Tul Wasr, right? So Hamza Tul Wasr is going to be, uh, you're going to skip that. Oh, man. I'm going to use a different example for this. Yeah, see the thing is, with when you have something like Ismun, the, when a word starts with Hamzat or Wasl, it technically doesn't count as the first letter. So if I use um, Mislun, Mislun means an example. Okay, then I can do that because the plural is amsalu. Just like in the Quran, what tilka amsalu nazibuha. But with ismun, um, the plural is going to be asma'un. Okay, so the steen is going to get the sukun. Uh, asma'un. So it, it's kind of different once we get to that rule, inshallah, I'll explain it more. Um, but just know that the plural for ismun is asma'un. Okay. What's two names? Uh, uh, Asmani. Yeah, Asmani. Asmani, right? Asmani are two names. Okay. How, well, how about um? Oh, sorry, Ismani. 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 Yeah. And in, in his name? Uh, Ismuhu. Ismuhu. Okay. Uh, brother Anwar, next one. What's Ammun in English? Ammun. Uh, ammu. Ammu is uncle. Uncle. Okay. How do you say uh, plural of Ammun? Uh, Ammati. No. Yeah. Amam. It's in the, I think one of the lessons in the end of the term. Amam. It's okay. We'll get, this is how we're going to get practice. Al Amani. Al Amam. Al Amam. Okay, how do you say two two uncles? Okay, how do you say his uncle? Okay, last one, Sir Daira. What's Majella to do? What's Majella? Very, we only use it once or twice. In book one, Majalla means what? No, that's Ajala. Fridge? That's uh, Thalaja. All these words. Majalla is something to read. Yes, Majalla. Majalla Tun is a magazine. Okay, how do you make it plural? It ends in Tamar Buta, right? So all that you do is follow the pattern. Majallatun. Majallatun. Al-Majallatun. Okay, how do you say two magazines? Majallatani. Okay, and that's it. Majallatuhu is his magazine. So obviously this is for homework that you can sit down, look up the word, and then write it down. So it took a little bit longer. So if you didn't get it, it was okay. But inshallah we'll do more of these. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Alright, so take out the verbs. Let's do some verbs.
right, so I'm not going to do the whole, I'm not going to write all of them out, um, but we're just going to do practice with them um, verbally, okay? Let's do um, in the first column, Akhaza. The last one is, or did you already do Akhaza once? It's okay. We'll do it again. Akhaza means uh -huh. what? He took, right? Or it's a cake. Akhaza. It's in the Quran a lot. What is a khazna misaqa bani Israel? Allah says, um, so when we took the misaq, the covenant from bani Israel. Okay. All right. Akhaza. 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 Akhazu. Akhazu. Akhazat. Akhazata. Akhazna. Akhazna. Akhazta. Akhazta. Akhazuma. Akhazuma. Akhazum. Okay, keep in try to keep in mind which pronouns we're matching them up to. Okay, what's so what's akhazum match to? Antum. Okay, akhazti. Akhazuma. Akhazuna. Akhazu. Akhazu. Akhazna. Okay, what's I took? Akhazu. What he took? And what she took? Akhazat. And what they took, group of men? Akhazu. Okay, and what we took? Akhazna. Akhazna with a noon alif. Okay, so Allah says, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهَ So when we took the covenant. So it's to take something like physically, like if I take uh, a book or if I take a covenant, means I agree upon a covenant. Okay? Uh, so just like in English. Uh, let's do um, second to last column, Shariba. Shariba means very common. Means second to last column. Yeah. Shariba means to drink, right? Sharab, like, you know? Yeah, Shariba is to drink. Right? Um, or shorba. That's where I think it comes from. So, okay, let's do shariba. 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 Sharibu. Sharibu. Sharibat. Sharibat. Sharibata. Sharibata. Sharibna. Sharibna. So, you notice how when we get to the uh, hunna, right, all you take the third radical and what do you put on it? Hun. So you're, it's going to sound like sharib, sharib, and then you attach all the files to it. Sharibna, sharibta, sharibtuma, sharibtum, sharibti, sharibtuma, sharibtunna, sharibtu, sharibna. How do you say they all drank? Huh? They all male. Sharibu. Sharibu. How do you say she drank? Sharibat. Sharibat. How do you say we drank? Sharibna. Okay, how do you say you male drank? Sharibta. Sharibta. Okay. Uh, let's do one more. Uh, on the third column, the last one is Faraa. Faraa. Faraa means? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, the, the, to, to read, right? To recite Qara, I was in the email. So this is also obviously in the Quran, right? Um, all right, Qara. Oh, so this is the one where this is like Bada'a that we discussed last week, right? So when something ends with uh, Hamza, like Bada'a, um, there's going to be two special changes, okay? So what's he, uh, he read? Qara. Qara. Okay. Qara. What about they two of them read? Qara. 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 So you're the the fa'il usually is an alif, right? All you do is put an alif there. But instead of having two alifs, you just put one alif with a mad. Okay, so it's qara. Okay, the two of them. What about um they all read? Qara'u. Qara'u. So, there's an alif last after a while. So, 
So there, there's going to be a little bit of change. So when let's take akhada as the example. So when you have akhada and you want to pair it with hum, right? What's the file that you use? What do, what do you have to put? What's they took? Akhazu. So what do you put here? Oh, wow. And this is a dhamma, right? And then I have to put uh, an alif to make the spelling correct. Okay, so this is the alif is for spelling. Akhazu. Okay. So when I do bada'a or qara'a, I'm gonna I'm, I have a hamza here, but what's gonna happen is because I'm making an u sound, this hamza is gonna change the seat from an alif to a wow. Okay. So the seat of the hamza changes from an alif to a wow. No, you don't. But you write the hamza. The hamza is the actual root. So if I ask, if I tell you what are the, if I ask you what are the roots, you're gonna say first root is off, the second root is raw, the third root is hamza. The hamza can change seats inside of a verb. So the hamza can be on top of an alif, it can be on top of a wow, it can be on top of a ya. All of these are hamza, but the the, the seat of the hamza is changed. So it can change the seat. So when you get to qara'u, the seat is going to change from an alif. It's still a hamza, but it's going to be on a wow. Okay? And this is just for the hum. So I'm going to write qara'u. I have to stretch the u sound, so I'm going to put an other uh, wow. And um, I'm going to put an alif because I can't end it with a wow. Oh, so that's it. So that's yeah, that's that's to stretch the u sound. So this, if that, if I just said this, it would be qara u. U. But I have to say qara u. I have to stretch the u sound. So we can have double u. Yes. So qara u. And this alif is just like this alif. You just put it at the end of. You don't end the sentence. Uh, you don't end the word. With it. Okay. So let's start from the beginning. Qara a. Okay, so after the after para para and afterwards they're all the same. Okay, so para ata para Okay, so when you when you go to para na to all them, so all you do is you you take the hamza and you just put a sukun. Para na. Para ta. Para ta. What's I recited? Okay, she recited. Okay, they all recited men. And you male recited? Qara'ta. And we all recited? Qara'ta. Qara'ta. Okay. Good. Any questions? So, Qara'ta, which is Hamza and Om, and which then is the Sukun? It's a Hamza with a Sukun. Qara'ta. For all of them? Yep. Is there a way of storing that, like that instead of having the double vowels there? Is there a madda or shadda or something that can tell you what that is? No, the madda is, I think, only for the alif. All right. Um, so let's go over what we talked about on Friday, which was we only did, um, we talked a little bit about inna, right? And we did la'alla, and we did. Uh, Go to the back of book two if you have it, lesson one.
you know, we just did, oh, we did Zool as well, right? So we did Zool. Um, yeah. So we'll just review quickly and then we'll. Um, page two. So we'll, we'll start from page one. We'll just go over uh, inna. Okay. So we said uh, inna was for jumla ismiya, right? So jumla ismiya begin is a nominal sentence and it begins with no. a noun, right? So you have a nominal sentence, and what are the two parts of the nominal sentence? Mubtada and khabar. Mubtada and khabar. Okay. So. Give me an example. Something with um, Muhammad. So Muhammad is the Muqtada. Give me a cover for it. Are you there? You, we tried to find out. Oh, you can't find it? I don't know what to do with it. Muhammad. Hawiya. Muhammad. Yeah, I'm just explaining. I'm just going over it. So, Muhammadun Qawiyun means Muhammad is strong. strong. Okay? So, here's my Muqtada, the subject, Muhammadun. Here's the Khabar, Qawiyun. Okay? If I want to make, if I want to put Inna, Inna is a particle of emphasis. Okay? So, what happens when I put Inna? Muhammadun changes to Muhammadan. So, what happens is that the Muqtada becomes now mansub and it's instead of being called a muqtada it's called ismu inna okay. and then does anything change with the khabar yes becomes khabar inna khabar inna right but the word itself no. doesn't change so ismu inna becomes mansub and the khabar inna stays uh, or whatever it was it, it doesn't have to stay but it, it doesn't change. Okay, khabar inna. Okay. So when you're describing the sentence, you're going to say inna is a particle of emphasis. Muhammadan is mansub and it's the ismu inna. And the qawiyun is the khabar inna. Okay. The qawiyun will not change. No, qawiyun. The khabar doesn't change grammatically. Okay. But it, it just change The term changes from khabar to khabar inna because you're specifying that this is a khabar of the um, part two on the next page was uh, talking about la'alla. Okay, la'alla is basically a uh, sister of inna. Okay, so anything that applies to inna, you apply to la'alla. Okay. Oh, one more thing for the inna. So this is for all of them. So if you have something like ana, ana qawiyun, right? So and I want to put inna in front of it. What do I have to do? In me, right? I can't say inna ana. So anything, any any of the fourteen pronouns, they just become attached pronouns at that point. So I'm gonna say in me or in nani. Yeah. Or or inna if it's if it's we or inna or inna. Na. So it's in me. So you just take take the pronouns and just put them as attached. Um. All right. So la alla means what? Hopefully, or maybe, or I hope, like I feel, I'm afraid. La'alla. Okay. Hope, so it signifies hope or fear. So this is, uh, you have inna, which means in English, indeed or surely, anything for emphasis. Okay. So la'alla is in, it's a sister of inna. So if I, if I want to say, uh, let's say I want to say, uh, I hope that Muhammad is strong, right? So I'm going to say, La'alla Muhammadan Qawiyun. So I'm going to, the Muhammadun is going to is going to be, be Mansoor. Muhammadan. And instead of calling it Ismu Inna, what am I going to call it? Ismu La'alla. So all of it, all you do is just change the Ism to Ismu La'alla. Okay? 
Okay, and then the khabar inna changes to khabar la'anna. I hope Muhammad is strong. Okay. Then there's other uh, other sisters of Inna as well. So they all follow the same one. Uh, what's another one? Anna. So Anna means what? That. Okay. So this is gonna be coming a lot in like the reading. So Inna is indeed, and Anna is that. Um, I can maybe use it here. You basically, I mean, you're not going to use it in the beginning of a sentence. You're going to use it like something like. Um, you can you could say something like ra'aitu. Ra'aitu means what? I saw. We're going to get to ra'a and how it's conjugate, how it's formed differently. So ra'aitu is um, I saw. And I can say, Anna Muhammadan Qawiyun. I saw that Muhammad is strong. So, Aitu Anna Muhammadan Qawiyun. What if you want to say, like, that Muhammad is strong? Like, if you're pointing out a specific Muhammad, then you can't use Anna. You have to use a demonstrative pronoun, right? So, you have to say, Zalika Muhammad, Zalika Rajul, that man. One after one, they're given I don't know. <laughs> it depends. We could have it. I don't know. Maybe. Even like, in the Yeah. yeah. Even, I'm definitely. Surely, I hope. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so there's Anna, which is that. And then there's also Ka'anna. Ka'anna means as if. So I can say, um, Ka'anna, Ka'anna Muhammadan Qawiyun. It's as if Muhammad is strong. Okay. As if. Then there's also, Li'anna. Uh, Li'anna means because. Okay. So you can say something, something, something. Li'anna Muhammadan Qawiyun. Muhammad one, you can say you can use najaha. Najaha means he succeeded, right? Or he was victorious. You can say najaha Muhammadun li anna Muhammadan. I guess this one, yeah, Muhammadan qawiyan. Or you can say li anna hu. You want to use a pronoun. Okay. So all of these you're gonna use the same pronoun. So if you wanna say, um, I hope I am strong, instead of using Ana Qawiyun, what am I going to say? La'alli. So if I'm saying, I hope I'm strong, if I'm using Ana, I'm going to have to use La'alla, and then I'm going to use the, the Yam to come in. La'alli Qawiyun, I hope I'm strong. Okay? Can you say La'alli? La'alli? No. Alright, last one is La'kinna. La'kinna means what? Lakin, Lakin, what's Lakin? What? But. Alright, so Lakinna is but. Okay. So you usually use it in the beginning or usually in the middle of something. So something, something, something. But Muhammad is strong. That thing, yep. Alright, so those are all of the sisters of Inna. You basically, what happens with the Ism? It becomes Mansub and the, the Khabar stays the same. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot you say something about uh, you know the way you put I thought like la jana like correct? Yeah, yeah. short sure, alif. Like this one? Yeah. What's the significance of this? Like is this a short sure, alif? Like is the spelling rule or no no. Is this to stress the la sound? That it would be lakinna, like lakinna. But it's for all intents and purposes pronounced the same as if it was a long one. Yeah, like if I could, I could it's write it as lakinna, like this. But um, it's usually not good form to break a word up into two different. Yeah. 
That's why, like you, you when you when you read like Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, it's it's usually it's supposed to be spelled like this Rahman, but they spell it with the with the meme and the noon together, and then they, there's the same implied shape. So you don't break up words. There was, a, there was actually a lecture in one of those things where they had like that and they showed like some of the ways that it was spelled mm. had some deeper meaning as well. Really? Yeah. All right. So number three is zu. Zu means uh, having or possessing. Yeah, so it's in Bangla too, right? Lekin. No? Oh, King. It's in Urdu, it's Lekin. Alright. No. So you, can, you can use Inna Muhammadan Qawiyun, or you can say Inna Aminata Qawiyatun. Yeah. So all the changes is the same. All the changes is the case. All right, so do means uh, possessing or having, okay? So the Quran says, do, zul, awshil, awin. Okay, so Allah is the zul, awshil, magin, the owner or the possessor of the, the mighty throne, the arsh. Um, so, du malin is possessing wealth, right? What's another? I mean, you can say ghaniyun or you can say du malin. Hua ghaniyun, hua du malin, they're both the same thing. Du khuluqin means possessing manners, right? Well mannered. Du ilmin, possessing knowledge. So, it can be abstract things or it can be concrete things. So, you can possess knowledge or you can possess a car. And what's what's the <clears throat> what what is it always mudaf mudaf ilayhi, right? So the zu is gonna be your mudaf, right? And then your mudaf um, ilayhi. So what, yeah, what's the rule for mudaf ilayhi? It has to be kasra, right? Or majroo. So that's why you say zul arshil, zul arshi. And why is azim have a kasra? Adjective to arsh, so the adjective gets all of the properties of the um, noun that it's describing. All right, and then there's different. So, zu is just for masculine singular. Then you have um, zatu, which is what feminine singular, and then you have zau, uh, zau, which is male. Male plural. Zau. Yeah, in this case, you don't put an alif because the zau is, is like a particle. Yeah. And then it's all, there's also zawati. Yeah, so you, you just like you memorize like haza, hazihi, hazani, hazani, tilka, hazalika. Same thing, you know. Zawatu. Zawatu Afnan. Okay. Um, so Zawatu is for feminine plural. Okay. Oh man, we have 15 minutes. Let's take a break for 15 minutes and then we'll come back and do the next part. And then you will get, I'll give the homework to you. <laughs>
All right, any questions about Zoo? All right, so I'll give a homework. So it'll be on the homework, um, so you can do it, and then inshallah we'll go over it again on Wednesday. Uh, let's read number four, um, Brother Afnan. So it's on the bottom of page two. So the word that we're there introducing is M. Okay, what's an interrogative sentence? Just a question, right? Interrogative question, just a question. A sentence is just a question. So when I, when you're using M, you're only going to use it in a sentence. And, what, and it means? Or. or. Okay, read the first example. A tabib anta am muhandisun. What does that mean? Are you a doctor or an engineer? Okay, are you a doctor or an engineer? Right, next one. Am min almania. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, next one. Okay, so what does it say that on the next page? Okay, so what they're saying is that in English, if you want to ask someone, are you a teacher or a doctor, if you translate that word for word in Arabi, you come up with anta mudarrisun am talibun. So that's what they're saying that that in Arabi is okay, but it's not, uh, it's not like eloquent. The more eloquent way to say it is how. What's what's uh, actually so? Read the next example too. Is it's also the incorrect way to say. Uh, it. So it, if you want to ask someone like, did you go to Mecca or Jeddah, right? If you say Azhabta ila Mecca ta am Jeddah, like meaning wise, it's correct. But what is the correct construction? Like, what is the better way to say it? Okay, so you see how they change the anta and mudarrisun. So instead of saying a anta mudarrisun, you're saying a mudarrisun anta. So all you're doing is you're switching the muktada and the khabar. Okay, and then because you're using your, you have two options. You have to put am between them. So a mudarrisun anta am talibun. Read the next sentence. Okay, so here is the same thing, but it's just a, um, a verbal sentence. So instead of saying, Azahabta ila makkata, you're saying, A ila makkata zahabta. So all you do is just switch them, uh, switch their places and put a in front of it. Okay? And then you put am between the second choice and the first choice. Uh, and then read the next part. So khud we haven't done. It's a, a fair al amr. It's a command. So it says it means take. It's from akhada to take, but it's the interrogative form khud. So take. Haza aw zaka. What's zaka? That right. And also, what's another word for zaka? Zalika. So zaka is just a shortening of zalika. Um, so, but they're saying that in a non in a, in just a regular sentence, you don't use am. You use aw. What? Yes. So you're just putting it in the yes. Uh, I read the next sentence. 
Okay, I saw three or four. So this is a non-interrogative, not a question. So you can use a oh, last one. So Bilal or Hamid went out. Okay. Um, so you use out for that. Um, anything you have time to do with me? Uh, let's. Okay. So for the homework, let me explain. Go to the beginning of the lesson. Um, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna write out. Let me write out the lesson. So you are going to do exercise seven. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff, but the homework will be good for practice. So you're gonna do number seven, number eight. Number nine and number ten for Monday for Wednesday. So seven, eight, nine, ten is the homework. Let, let's go through them real quickly and make sure we understand them. Number seven says on page eight, تأمل ال مثالين ثم كون جملة مثلهما من الكلمات الآتية. So it says ponder the two examples. And then make the uh, the sentences like them from the following words. So the first example they give is, "Amin al Hindi anta amin Pakistana." So this is a type of question. Second question is, "Atabibun anta am Muhandisun." So the the first example they give you. So they're gonna give you three words, and you have to put them into a question. So the first one is, "Anta mujtahidun or kaslan." So how do you make that into a sentence? So do that for all of them. Okay, so there's ten of them. Number eight, it says, Tamil al Amsila al Atia Li Tamil al Amsila al Atia Li Zu. So ponder the following examples of Zu. So you can just um, practice writing them out. You don't have to. You don't have to write them, but you can read them. Uh, so these are all zu used in a sentence. Okay. Mudiruna zu qamatin tawilatin. Qama is like height. Okay. The first example they give is mudiruna. Qamatin uh, is uh, height. Uh, this one is different. Are you saying? But it's qamatun height, height. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure it's from the sentence. But I'm so... saying that's not even. It's a different thing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you have uh, the book you were looking at. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, so it might be a different example. Does that, do, does everybody have uh, qamatun? I have qamatun too. Yeah. Brother Is it different, brother Anwar, for you? Different. Okay, never mind. Yeah. So that's what long height. Lihya. 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 Lihya.
the wu change it accordingly and the wad wu change it accordingly. That's basically it. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 you have to write three sentences. They already gave you the one with wu, so make it with the other one. Okay? Um, and actually, all of the instructions are if you go to the back of lesson one, um, it'll tell you all of the. If you go to the exercises, it, it says it translates the instructions. Number 10 is أدخل العلا على الجملة الآتية علما بأن العلا من أخوات الناس So it says enter العلا or put العلا in the following sentences knowing that العلا is one of the sisters of inna. So all of these ones like the first one is هو بخير he is what's بخير good so you have to put العلا Right, so with la'alla, you're going to say la'alla hu bi khayran. Okay, so do that for all of the ten. And you can just look in the back. So I, so read the back of it again just to review it and then do the example. So 7, 8, 9, 10, inshallah, we'll go over them on Monday. Any questions? On Monday? Sorry. Inshallah. <laughs> okay, jazakallah khair. As-salamu alaykum.